my family lives in a big old house. Not this house, but a house sort of like this, a big house that's, that's been around for a long time. There are always issues happening around the house and I'm the, the you know, kind of the handyman, uh, if you will. So I'm, I'm called upon to fix a lot of different things around the house. So when something goes wrong and I've got to work on something, I just grab my, my handy toolbox or my tool bag in my case. And it's got all kinds of stuff in it because I never exactly know what I'm going to need necessarily when I get into this. And, and truth is, I'm probably going to need a few different things and I want to have all of them with me, but not all tools are the same and they don't all do the same thing. So I'm in need a variety of things. The same is true when we think about small groups. Small groups aren't all the same. They don't serve the same function. They don't all work the same way and don't all provide the same kind of outcome. So in this video, we want to take a look at the different types of small groups that we encounter as we begin our discussion of, of small group communication and some of the different types of groups that we may be involved in. So when we think about the different types of groups, first, we, we look at orientation. We can look at orientation. Is this a task oriented group or a relational oriented group? Task oriented groups are formed to solve a problem. Um, they promote a cause. They generate ideas or information. They have a to do list things that they're trying to accomplish in a specific you know, goal in mind for what they're trying to accomplish. Relational oriented groups, though, are formed more to promote interpersonal connections and are more focused on you know, quality of interactions that contribute to the well-being of the group members. So I think you're about, you know, support groups, groups of friends, things like that that are more focused on building those individual relationships and building up the individual people involved, as opposed to having a specific to do list for that group. So uh, there are different groups and they have different purposes and, and there's a spectrum there. Not, you know, it's not an either or type of thing. You can have a little bit of both, but some groups are heavily task oriented. Some are heavily relationally oriented and some are somewhere in the middle and they fall all along that spectrum. We can also look at what we call primary and secondary groups, right? Primary groups are formed based on those interpersonal relationships. So we're thinking here about family and close friends, uh, people with whom you have frequent interactions and, and long lasting ties. These are, these are groups that last for um, a long, long time, years, right? Not just um, days or even weeks. <clears throat> But we also have secondary groups. These are groups that are less emotional and relational. Uh, there are less relational connections and they're more task oriented. So think about, you know, your office, not the office, but your office, you know, your coworkers and people like that. They're, these are more secondary. They, they have maybe a, an expiration date, so to speak. You know, they're, they're relationships that exist only as long as you're with that organization and, and that person that other, those other people are part of that organization. And and uh, may not have the same kind of again, emotional relational connection, but is more task oriented. And that's what we would call a secondary group. Then we can also think about teams. Then you know, what, what's the difference between a group and a team? Well, a group, a team is really a type of group. Um, it's just more task oriented and members are in a team. What we would define as a team are especially loyal and dedicated to that task and to the other group members. So it's really more about cohesion. A team is just a group that's really um, tight knit and really focused on what they're doing and focused on um, benefiting the others and working together as a group. So then we would kind of, they would kind of be elevated to that team status. You can also have, of course, now in the, the, the days of technology and especially in our post pandemic days, we see a lot of virtual teams, right? Teams that meet exclusively or primarily online to achieve their purpose or goal. And there are specific kind of rules and roles within that as well. So you can see we have a lot of different types of teams represented here, different, you know, that we can be involved in. So it's important to recognize that there are different types of teams. It's also important to recognize that each of these requires something a little different. And as we get into this, we're going to talk about the different variables that exist within group communication. So we need to, to be able to identify what type of group is this and, and how does that affect the way that I communicate and interact and work with the other group members. If you have questions about the types of groups or about group communication in general, feel free to email me. Uh, I'd love to hear from you there. Um, otherwise, I will uh, so hopefully see you in the next video. And hopefully you understand now uh, the different types of teams and groups that are out there and how that might impact your communication in small groups.